Oh, that's a good fish. <laughs> He's giving it to me now. That is a good fish, whatever that is. Oh, look at the size of that bass, folks. <laughs> Little jig bass. Come on, come on, come on. Boy, you can always tell what time of year it is up here. <laughs> look at that fish, it's pregnant. Oh, caught it on that persuader, that persuader jig. Look at that. Such a beautiful football bass right there. Folks, today, look at that. Oh my goodness. We're at my favorite lake. Go on, baby. Early in the morning before the wind gets kicking real hard at Rainbow Lake. You know, I'm not one of those guys that has a pond in his backyard, but this is about as close as you can get to your backyard. I'm about a minute from this lake, from where I live. I grew up on this lake, love this lake, and, uh, Love to fish it. I like to come here at least once a year and, and uh, you know, do a show here for you too as well. And I believe it or not, I actually get to sleep in my own bed at night when I come do a show here, so it's pretty awesome. <laughs> but here's the other awesome part. It is so hot right now down at Roosevelt at Lake Pleasant. And uh, I'm up here towards mid-May, mid-May. And these bass are just now moving up. Water temperature. 59 degrees, 59 degrees. And today what I'm doing is just kinda, I'm gonna make that lap around the lake. We're famous for doing that here on the, in the beautiful White Mountains of Arizona. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's, one of the, it's one of these type of, of uh, areas where our lakes are small enough, you can throw your big bass boat on, just use your trolling motor, you can't use the big motor, and make a lap around the lake, see what it has to offer, and have a lot of fun. And uh, you know, you're not gonna catch a ton of fish on these lakes, but you can sure still have a lot of fun, see the beauty and, and get to flip some docks. This is about as close to Florida fishing as you're gonna get. We got a lot of weeds normally in this lake. Of course, they haven't all grown up yet. And, and uh, you know, we've got a ton of docks. If you love dock fishing, things like that, uh, they, they don't, you know, it's not like Roosevelt where you can't fish the docks. You can fish the docks here, you know? And uh, I, I tell you, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I, I love this lake. I, I grew up fishing this lake when this lake didn't even have but one dock, and that was that dock right over there, and they used to rent boats there, and they still do, believe it or not, if you want to come out here. They've got a little bait and tackle place right there that you can go to and, and, and get some bait and tackle and come on out, and they also rent, uh, I think, uh, other type of boats out here for exercise and things like that, but a lot of fun. I caught that fish on a Persuader jig, and I'm throwing the chartreuse, remember, up here we have a lot of crawdad. We don't have any shad. A lot of crawdad. We have a lot of, of uh, you know, bluegill, things like that in these lakes. Trout. Uh, but anyways, the, this jig is awesome. I love the chartreuse in it with a little bit of the green in it. And then I'm just throwing a little craw flapper on the back and uh, throwing it around. It's a little casting jig. Throwing it on 17 pound test line because you catch fish like that, you know it. You know, that was a beautiful fish. What a way to start my morning. Ooh, my hands are cold, I love it. It's brisk out. I even had to put my jacket on. I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe how cold it is. And uh, to catch a big old fish like that, boy, that's fun. You can't beat that. Get out here and sneak out here before everybody else gets out here. What's really nice is during the week, there's not a whole lot of people that come out here, so. It works out pretty nice. On the weekend, it's pretty pretty packed, but uh, during the week, there's not a whole lot of folks out here. And a lot of people come up here to trout fish. And let me tell you something. Some great trout fishing in this lake. Um, you gotta fish towards the middle of the lake, but you gotta do it before, say, mid-June, because after that, it starts weeding up so bad. And they have put grass carp in here, but it gets weedy so bad that your lures are constantly getting caught up. So you wanna get out here and do some of that trout fishing uh, you know, early in the season especially when the water's cold. Trout like it when it's cold. Today we're largemouth bass fishing, so we're gonna see what we can't do. Stick with us, we're gonna go down the bank, make a lap around Rainbow Lake, my hometown lake, and see if we can't catch some fish for you today. Get 
naked in here. <laughs> Look at that. Folks, I had to make a little switch. That's just a little female. Nice female though. Little female bass. Now here's the deal. <laughs> We've gone around the lake. It's muddied up a lot. I can't believe how muddy this lake got. But what I ended up doing was switching over to the Ica. And it's made by Yamamoto Bates, and I've rigged it up backwards, you know. Normally a lot of guys would hook it up the other way. I've rigged it up backwards where it flares out a little bit using a three-aught wide gap hook and uh, just making sure that it's buried in there, Texas rig like that. And he hit the jig when I first threw it in there. And then I saw the fish. Once I saw the fish and I tried to get him to eat the jig again, I couldn't get him to eat it. So what I did was throw something weightless out there. And that's the thing, when you come up to the White Mountains, weightless works great. Whether you're throwing a Cinco, a Lizard, a, you know, anything weightless in, in this area works good. I mean, the lake is, you know, very low right now at, at best. Where, it, you know, your boat's gonna be sitting in three, four, five foot of water at best. And so weightless stuff works really good. But when the fish, when you come across fish like that, and they're hard to see, I got a good pair of polarized sunglasses, the sun's coming up a little bit, but I got whacked in there on my jig, and when I threw in there, I couldn't get him to bite again, and that's when I went to this. And you gotta have kind of a one-two punch, and that's something else that I think that's real important, is lure selection up here. You know, if it's windy, wind's blowing, spinner baits are awesome, you know, uh, the chatter bait has really been on fire up here on, on, the, on the local lakes. You know, I mean, you can catch some fish on it. I wouldn't say on fire, but you can catch some fish on it. And uh, of course, you know, you can go to your weightless stuff to try to pick up some of these fish. Wind's supposed to start blowing 20 some odd mile an hour today. So we tried to get out early enough to where we can catch some fish. We've made a lap through, we went up through the river and came back through, didn't see a whole lot going on. I did have a pike come after my bait once, uh, my jig as I was reeling it up. That's something they don't want in these lakes, so if you catch a pike, make sure you get it out. This particular setup that I'm throwing is the same setup I'd be throwing on my wacky rig. You know, I'm still using my white nana fill so I can really see the line jump. I'm throwing a 10-pound fluorocarbon leader, okay, and then I'm just throwing the Ica today. You can throw a Cinco, you can throw a Lizard, uh, all that stuff works really good. And drop shots work here good too as well. But uh, these are the few baits that I like. And I go with a watermelon or a green pumpkin or something like that's really good up here. So that's an awesome color. But that's how I rig it. And uh, I'll tell you what, you'll catch a lot of fish doing that. They're there for sure. There was a little tiny male in there, but we can move on. Before the wind gets to kicking a lot, I wanna see if we can catch some bigger fish. Grab my jig and move down the lake a little bit. We just got lucky and happened to see these fish. And it's hard, you gotta really move slow. And of course I'm using my power poles and I'll tell you something, I will say this right off the bat, power poles in this lake are awesome because I can be, it seems like you're out in the middle of the lake and you can drop down on your power poles because you're, you're only fishing, you know, like I said, your, your boat's in three, four foot of water. Right now I'm in two foot of water. So, you know, I'm just going down the bank and I'm seeing them catching them that way. I'll go back to my jig, I'll throw down, I'll keep looking. You know, I'm gonna, we're getting into the clear water, heading out towards the main lake and see if I can see anything else while I'm fishing. But that's a good ticket right there. Always have a one-two punch set up. He went after this a few times and he bit it the first time and I missed him. I was a little slow at the gun, but uh, he finally turned around and got it, the, the female did. So we'll move on, see if we can't find some more fish here. The water definitely clears up towards the main lake. The problem we'll have to deal with in the, on the main lake at this point will be the wind. We'll have to see how we can deal with that and combat that a little bit. Maybe throw that chatterbait a little bit. Got it. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> There's a jig fish for you, folks. Oh my goodness. No. Come on. <laughs> All right, you're done. Come on up here. Come on up here. Now that's a football. Now that's a foot. We talk about footballs. That's a football. Look at that. Huh? <laughs> that's a good looking jig fish right there. That's why you throw jigs. 
They eat craws, they go after them jigs, and they definitely don't want them around any place where they're spawning. Look at that. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you what, I love this time of year when they get up and do that and start roaming and moving up. <laughs> just, you, you take these rocky banks, you just start throwing down them with the jig and, and boy, they pop it good. You know, I, this is only a 3 8 ounce jig. I gotta mention that for sure. I'm throwing a lighter jig. A lot of guys like heavier jigs. I like the lighter ones this time of year only because, you know, I like it to float down a little bit slower where they can see it good. And, and uh, I just, I, you know, as much as I like weightless stuff, I like to go as light as I can. 3 8 ounce, quarter ounce jigs are awesome. But that chartreuse's ticket, it's like having the tail of a, a bluegill there. And then, uh, like I said, adding a little chigger craw. And what's neat about this bait, it's compact. Really small and compact, the way they built this bait. And that is an awesome deal right there. Now, throwing this on 17 pound test line, you got to throw it on a heavy action rod. I'm using a Taipan heavy action rod and uh, 6.2 to 1 or 6, you know, a good gear ratio reel, a little bit higher speed. I don't go too high speed. I don't use like the seven, the sevens and the eights and the nines on my jigs. I like that six. It's good. I can winch them in good and, and uh, it works out pretty good for me. But that's, that's the rig that I'm throwing right there, you know, and uh, you don't have to go an eight foot rod when you're jig fishing, you know, seven two, a seven three, somewhere in that neighborhood's really good. I got a stiff backbone with this rod and it works out really nice and a, just a good heavy tip. And it's just enough tip there to where you get a good, good hook set, you know? Now, the one thing to remember when you're fishing this lake is uh, you can change colors of your jigs you know, when you're going down the bank and you've covered the water and you're getting some jig bites and stuff, a lot of times I've always been famous for changing up the color just a little bit. I'll go to maybe a brown copper or a brown orange or something like that uh, jig if I'm gonna take another lap to see if I can catch some more fish. Because after they've seen this, you know, uh, you can throw something a little different in there and they'll bite it. Fishing these lakes is just a little bit different up here than it is, say, fishing Roosevelt where you can go down tons of bank, you know, you, you cover this water once, you wanna pick up something a little different maybe and, and try to uh, find something that the fish haven't seen yet that they're willing to bite. So that's something else that's really key. Another thing is, is learning how to skip your, your jigs and stuff under the, under the cables and stuff. And uh, I'll be honest with you, when you first come out in the morning and you have a low light visibility, you know, the docks really aren't gonna be so key like they will be when the sun comes up. Now, when the sun comes up is when you want to start thinking about doing your dock fishing. This time of year, you want to be sure that you're fishing between the docks and every place because they'll make their beds, they'll come out and make their beds, you know, in front of reeds or something like that. And you, you don't want to be afraid to pull it off, you know, five, 10 feet off the bank because they'll make beds way out here because it's so shallow. I mean, I'm in seven, eight foot of water. We're we're here in a part of the lake where we're at, that's almost the deepest part of the lake, believe it or not. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing that'll help you with jig fishing, especially around rocks, when you first pull a jig out of the package, a lot of times they have the brush guard and it's really thin and it goes right over the hook like so. Okay, let me get the line out of the way. One thing that'll help you is when you first get a jig out of the out of the box, spread the little brush guard out a little bit. And what that does when you spread it like that, you don't have to spread it a lot, but spread it just enough to where when the jig does fall and roll over rocks, the hook doesn't get caught up and the brush guard kind of helps it roll over the rocks a lot better. Something I really like about the Persuader jig is it's got a flat head on the bottom. So when it sits on the bottom, it normally sits like that. But still, when you're pulling it over, when you're pulling it over rocks, it will have a tendency to roll. Any jig will do that. So you want to be sure that you spread out your weed guard a little bit, and that'll keep the hook point from getting inside the rocks, and it'll keep you from getting hung up a lot. That's my tip of the week. There's one. He hit that jig. <laughs> he's not a big one, but he's a, he hit it. Get in here. <laughs> You hit me on the way out there, little feller. 
Look at that fish. Even the little ones, you gotta see this. Let me turn the boat. Even the little ones have a, look at that little belly on them. They're little footballs, man. <laughs> That's not a long skinny fish. That thing's the size of my hand. Look at that. <laughs> That's the deal. <laughs> throwing it up, just throwing it on the rocks. You know, finding some rock banks right now seems to be the ticket. It's a little bit steeper there. They got something to hide in. And uh, the flats just ain't cutting it. The, of course, it's all flat really on this lake, but what I'm saying is, is the flats just aren't the flat muddy banks. You gotta have something with rock on it. Seems to be holding the fish a little better. That little jig does the trick. And it's amazing how bright and chartreuse this jig is, because it's bright, but it, it gets it done. I don't know if they think it's a little bluegill or what, but boy, they hate it. They can't stand it. Look at this thing in the water. You know, when you look at it in the water, look how bright that thing is. They're smashing it. Oh, there is two. Got him. <laughs> Now that's skipping up under the dock there and getting one. Not a big fish, but another Ica fish. You know, this place has got so much to offer. And as the sun's coming up, now the sun's coming up, now's when you would want to move to the docks and start fishing the dock, skipping stuff under the dock. And uh, cause they're gonna use that shade to hide in and uh, they feel more comfortable in those areas. But remember, as you're hitting these docks, you know, you can, if, if you're throwing something like this or a Cinco or a lizard, you can just skip it right up underneath the dock where they're hiding and catch these fish. And that's what makes this place so much fun. Wind's starting to kick up. You can go down through here, throw spinner baits, do what you like to do on the main lake. You got a big wide open area. We've got boulders here. But what I like to do at this point in the, in the mid part of the day is start going dock to dock. And uh, See if I can pull a couple out from underneath those. Well, we've made one lap around the lake. We caught five fish, six fish, I think, something like that. Anyways, I had a good time on the water. Uh, you can have a lot of fun on this lake. It's starting to get a little bit breezy, a little windy. And uh, you can get out here on Rainbow Lake when it's hot down in the valley and uh, get up here in the beautiful White Mountains. And I'll tell you what, there's so much to offer up here with biking trails and uh, great restaurants and, and places to go that you got to get up here and you can still enjoy the great outdoors even though we've had a dry season in town, just in town alone. We got a lot of things going on here in Pine Top Lakeside. You'd want to come up and check it out. Thanks for joining us on the show. We'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks.